Daf Yomi, Tractate Bava Metziah, page 102. A, top of the page, the words, Begunvat, Begunvata Dekanya. To insert a mezuzah inside a hollow reed, and then affix the whole arrangement to the doorpost. The sage is taught in a brighta. If one rents a house to another, the responsibility to prepare a mezuzah for it and affix it upon and to affix it is upon the renter. And when he leaves, he may not take it in his hand and leave with it. Rather, he must leave it there. But if he rented a house from a Gentile, he may take it in his hand and leave with it. And there was an incident in which a renter took his mezuzah in his hand and left with it, and as a punishment he eventually buried his wife and two sons. Wow, that's a severe punishment for taking his mezuzah. The Gemara asks, was the incident cited to contradict the ruling immediately preceding it, which permits one to take the mezuzah? Rav Shesha says, the incident relates to the first clause. The Mishnah teaches the manure found near the courtyard of a rented house is the property of the landlord, and the renter has rights only to the ashes that come out of the oven and the stove which can also be used as a fertilizer. The Gemara asks, with what are we dealing? If we say that the mission is referring to a courtyard that is rented out to the renter, or where the manure was produced by the oxen of the renter, then why should it be the property of the landlord? It is clearly the property of the of the renter. Rather, the Mishnah must be referring to a courtyard that is not rented out to the renter, and the manure was produced by the oxen of the landlord. Gemara asks, but if so, the ruling is obvious and need not to have been taught. The Gemara answers no. The, the ruling is necessary in a case where the manure is in a courtyard of the landlord and the source of the manure was oxen that came from the world at large and stood in the courtyard and produced the manure. The Mishnah rules that in such a case the manure belongs to the landlord. The Gemara suggests that ruling in the Mishnah that any manure deposited in the landlord's courtyard belongs to him, supports the ruling of Rabbi Yossi, son of Rabbi Hanina, as Rabbi Yossi, son of Rabbi Hanina, says. A person's courtyard affects acquisition for him of an item placed in it, even without his knowledge. The Gemara raises an objection to this ruling from a Brita. If one says any lost items that come into my courtyard today, my courtyard should affect acquisition of them for me. He has not said anything of legal significance and does not acquire those items. The Gemara explains the objection, and if it is so that this ruling that Rabbi Yossi, the son of Rabbi Hanina, says is correct, in other words, that a person's courtyard affects acquisition for him of an item placed in it, even without his knowledge, then why has he not said anything of legal significance? The Gemara resolves difficulty with what are we dealing here in the in the Brighton? We are dealing with a courtyard that is not secured, as the halacha is, that such a courtyard does not affect acquisition of items for its owner. 
to get more questions this resolution. If so, say and try to explain accordingly the latter clause of the bride that states if knowledge of the existence of that lost item is spread through the town. His statement stands and his courtyard acquires it. The Gemara explains the difficulty. And if the bride is referring to a courtyard that is not secured, even where knowledge of the, of the existence of a lost item spread through the town, what of it? Such a courtyard is unable to effect acquisition for its owner of items placed in it. The Gemara answers, once knowledge of the, exist, of the existence of that lost item spreads through the town, people withdraw themselves from it, as they assume that the owner of the courtyard will take it. Therefore, no one will even try to take it, and the courtyard will be like a secured courtyard, which can affect acquisition of items for its owner. The warrant raises an objection to Rabbi Yossi's ruling from right to refuse of the oven and of the stove, in other words, the ashes, and that which was collected in the renter's vessel from the airspace of the courtyard is the renter's property and, and refuse. That is, why did he refuse the refuse? And and refuse, he refused it because it was refuse. And, and refuse, that is, in the... And refuse that is in the in the cow shed and in the courtyard. In other words, manure is the property of the landlord. The Gemara explains the question, and if it is so, that this ruling that Rabbi Yossi, the son of Rabbi Hanina, says is correct, that the person's courtyard affects acquisition for him of an item placed in it even without his knowledge, then with regard to refuse collected from the airspace, of the courtyard, why is it the renter's property? It was a, it was first in the airspace of of the landlord's courtyard, and it should consequently be acquired by him immediately. Abaye said the bride is referring to a case where the renter attached his vessel to a cow's rear. Any manure produced by the cow would immediately enter the renter's vessel, without first entering the airspace of the courtyard. And the renter would consequently acquire it. Acquire it. Rava said any. Oh, okay. Rava said an item in the airspace of a courtyard that will not eventually come to rest in the courtyard itself is not regarded as though it had come to rest. Accordingly, even if the refuse traveled through the airspace of the courtyard, since it was always on course to enter the renter's vessel, it is not acquired by means of the landlord's courtyard. More asks, and is is this principle really so obvious to Rava? But didn't he raise it as a dilemma? As Rava raises the dilemma, if one cast a purse through his doorway of a house and it went through the house and exited through the doorway, what is the halacha? Is an item in the airspace of a courtyard that will not eventually come to rest in the courtyard itself regarded as though it had come to rest, or is it not regarded as though it had come to rest? Gore explains that Rose Lem is concerning a different case. Rava's lemma concerning a different case there, in the case of the purse, nothing at all interposes between the purse and the floor of the house. And therefore, Rava was unsure about the halachin. Here, where the renter's vessel interposes, it was obvious to Rava that the renter's vessel affects acquisition 
of the item. The Gemara analyzes the latter clause of the above cited Brita and refuse that is in the cow shed and in the courtyard is the property of the landlord. The Gemara asks, can these two statements coincide by stating that the refuse in the cow shed belongs to the landlord? It indicates that the refuse in the courtyard belongs to the renter. How then can the Brita continue to rule that even the refuse in the courtyard belongs to the landlord. Okay. Abai said that this is what the price is saying, and, and refuse that is in the cow shed that's located in the courtyard rented out to the renter is the property of the landlord. Extrapolating from a bias statement, Ravashi said that that is to say that one who rents out his courtyard without specification of what is included in the rental agreement has not rented out a cow shed that is located in it. The Gemara raises an objection to Yossi's ruling from another right up. There is a mitzvah to dispatch a mother bird if one wishes to take eggs from her nest, Deuteronomy 22, 6 or 7, the mitzvah of Shulach Akain, or Shulach Akan, as some people call it. The mitzvah applies only if the bird and eggs are ownerless. Doves of a dove coat and doves of an attic are subject to the obligation of dispatching the mother bird as they are ownerless. Nevertheless, they are subject to the prohibition of robbery due to a rabbinic ordinance to maintain the ways of peace. Okay. Viter. The Gemara explains the question. And if it is so that this ruling that Rabbi Yossi, son of Rabbi Hanina, says is correct, in other words, that a person's courtyard affects acquisition for him of an item placed in it, even without his knowledge, then a dove coat or attic will affect acquisition for its owner of any eggs inside them. Accordingly, one should apply here the principle of uh, that the mitzvah to dispatch the mother bird from upon her nest applies only if it happened before you, Deuteronomy 22.6, which excludes a bird or an egg that is readily accessible, such as one that... One owns if the mitzvah to dispatch the mother. If the brighter rules, then the mitzvah does apply in this case. Okay. Rava said it is from the time of the emergence of the majority of an egg from the mother bird's body that one becomes subject to the obligation of dispatching her from her from upon her egg. And the owner of a dove coat does not require the, the egg un, until it fully emerges and falls into its courtyard and therefore when the bride uh, teaches that in the case of, of, of doves or of a dove coat and of an attic one is subject to the obligation of dispatching the mother bird it is referring to a time before the egg falls into his courtyard. The Gemara uh, asks, if that is so, the Brita is referring to a case where the egg has not fully emerged. Why does the Brita rule that there are forbidden rabbinic law there there are forbidden there are forbidden by rabbinic law for others to take during the prohibition of robbery? The Gemara answers the ruling of the Brita is referring to their mother, the mother bird. And if you wish, say Actually, that ruling is referring to the sages. I'm sorry, that, that ruling is referring to the eggs. And the reason the sages enacted that taking them is robbery is because once the majority of an egg emerges, the dovecote or addict's owner's mind is upon the eggs to acquire them. Although technically he will not re- acquire them until they fully emerge. And, and now, the Rabbi Yehuda says that Rob says is prohibited to acquire, is prohibited to acquire eggs 
as long as the mother bird is upon them, it is, as it is first stated, Got it. That's where the Valero used to be. Gansi. Now Rabiuda says that Rob says it is prohibited to acquire the eggs as long as the mother bird is upon them as it for is first stated, send them away the mother only then and take the young for yourself. Deuteronomy 22, verse 7. Even if you say that the eggs fully emerged and fell into his courtyard, he will not acquire them because in any case in which the courtyard owner is able to acquire any item by himself, his courtyard can affect acquisition of it for for him, but in any case in which he is unable to acquire them, acquire an item by himself, his courtyard cannot affect acquisition of it for him either. The more asked if that is so nice. If that is so finishing stretch here. If that is so, the bride says, referring to the case where the courtyard cannot affect the acquisition of the eggs for him, why does the halakha rule? There are subjects to the prohibition of robbery due to rabbinic organisms to maintain the ways of peace. If one dispatched the mother bird, in which case the courtyard would automatically affect the acquisition of the eggs, then taking them would be full fledged robbery. And if one did not dispatch the mother bird, doesn't he need to dispatch her before it is permitted to take the eggs? Either way, one would have, would have transgressed to a law. Why then does the price refer to a rabbinic prohibition of robbery rather than one by Torah law? The Gemara answer is the price is referring to a minor who is not subject to the midst of dispatching a mother bird. The Gemara challenges this answer based on the latter clause of the Brita as a minor subject to rabbinic prohibition of robbery and enacted to maintain the ways of peace. The Gemara explains this is what the latter clause of the Brita is saying. The father of a minor who took such eggs is obligated to return them to the owner of the dove coat or attic due to the rabbinic prohibition of robbery instituted to maintain the ways of peace. And that's the end of that. The Mishnah says, New Mishnah, in a case of one who rents out a house to another for a year, and then the year it was intercalated, adding an additional month to that year, the fact that it was intercalated to the benefit of the renter, since the rental was defined in terms of a year, the additional month is automatically included, and the renter need not pay additional rent for it. If a landlord rented out the house to another for a year with the price set at a certain sum for each of the months, then the year uh, the year was intercalated. The fact that it was intercalated is the benefit of the landlord. An incident occurred in Sipori involving one who rented a bathhouse from another where they stated that the rent would be 12 gold dinars per year, a gold dinar per month. And then the year was intercalated 